And we're going to turn now to the update on, on a story that we've been following closely uh, along the, the southern border. The Justice Department is now taking action against the state of Texas. Yesterday, the DOJ filed a criminal complaint against the state for breaking federal law by placing buoys in the Rio Grande along Eagle Pass, Texas, to deter migrants from crossing into the U.S. It comes after the state defied a 2 p.m. deadline to remove those buoys. There you see them. Uh, it's a pretty long string of buoys. The governor of Texas accuses President Biden of hindering his ability to secure the Texas border. Last night, Greg Abbott said Texas is willing to take this case all the way to the Supreme Court. Joining us now, NBC News correspondent Priscilla Thompson. She is in Eagle Pass, Texas. Also with us is NBC News Homeland Security correspondent Julia Ainsley. So, Priscilla, what do things look like there today? Well, Jose, things are full steam ahead here. You see some of these construction crews continuing to work on the buoys back here. And to give you a sense, these buoys are about three football fields in length, and they are in some of the lowest parts of the river. And so what we're seeing is migrants having to navigate the deeper water along the edges in order to try to cross because they are continuing to cross. There's also razor wire down on the river's embankment. And, of course, this fence, which is also covered in razor wire, but that is not stopping for migrant migrants from crossing. We have seen some of these graphic injuries of the types of injuries or graphic photos of the types of injuries that people have sustained climbing over this razor wire as they continue to make uh, their way here to uh, claim asylum. And we spoke to one woman, a Venezuelan migrant, and she described what the journey has been like for her and why she made this treacherous journey. I want to play a little bit of that conversation. And you hear her there saying that coming here from Venezuela was a necessity to her, that she had had a gun held to her head, she had been robbed, her children almost kidnapped. We also encountered a couple from Honduras. The woman was eight months pregnant and, again, made this treacherous journey past the buoys, past the razor wire. And Customs and Border Patrol actually had to cut the fence to get her out and try to get her some support. So these are the types of issues that we're seeing as people are saying this is a humanitarian issue. Issue, but the governor has said that this is sending a message to people that they need to cross through the ports of entry. And, of course, the DOJ now suing, saying that not only is this illegal, but it's also inhumane. Jose? Yeah, I mean, and Priscilla, that, it's important to, to state that leaving Venezuela uh, is just the most difficult conditions they have to go through. They have to go through the Darien jungle and then through Mexico. But it's in Mexico where they find that people are putting guns to their heads, trying to steal their children, and in many cases, actually stealing their children. And it's not just cartel members, but it's also many times police and, and government officials. Julia, where does the case stand uh, versus DOJ and Texas? Yeah, Jose, I'm outside DOJ right now. I've been speaking to some officials and spokespeople inside who say, look, they've sued now to try to stop this in the Western District of Texas. But the thing we're all waiting for, and I haven't gotten a confirmation on this yet, but we'll let you know when we do, is whether or not they seek an injunction to try to stop these buoys from being in place and get a judge to order that they be taken down in the immediate while the court case plays out. It's not clear if they're going to resort to that legal option yet or not. But, you know, as Priscilla points out, Texas argues that these migrants should go through legal ports of entry. Well, the Mayorkas Department of Homeland Security under the Biden administration already has a plan for migrants to go through ports of entry. And we've seen that increase by over a thousand a month as migrants try to make appointments on the CBP-1 app. But look, the demand is so high because of those dangerous conditions. And for some people, it's a matter of life and death that they have to choose not to wait and to come across. And that is why the Justice Department is saying that even though they've set up those pathways, what Texas is doing now is overreaching their authorities, violating federal laws on rivers, and it's inhumane and impedes their work there on the border. And Julia, I'm so glad that you bring this up because this is not happening in a vacuum. I mean, five migrants were rescued in California last week after they were abandoned there by 
coyotes in, in, in the oppressive heat. Mexican authorities say that in the last week, around 800 migrants have been rescued in Mexico as they were being smuggled heading to the U.S. That's a case where the Mexican government is actually helping them. But what does this tell us about the dangers and the reality people are facing in trying to reach the U.S. and, and Julia, when they're in Mexico? Well, Priscilla perfectly laid out and showed through those powerful human stories how dangerous things are in Mexico. That's something that's been well documented by international NGOs. But you don't have to watch our news for very long, Jose, to know how oppressive the heat is, too. And for a lot of these migrants who have been kept back because of that dangerous concertina wire, they've dealt with dehydration. We saw just last week an internal whistleblower with Texas DPS saying that he saw a four-year-old pass out who couldn't get through that wire and was dehydrated. There's been allegations that the Texas Border Patrol is not providing them water, although they've said to us uh, independently that they do provide water in the case of a medical necessity. But it's a really dire humanitarian situation. And usually we see the numbers go down, Jose, when the temperatures go up. But what we're actually seeing is a slight increase at this point compared to the very low numbers we saw after the lifting of Title 42, which means that even though we're at these record heat waves, there are some migrants who are just too desperate to wait, Jose. And Priscilla, I, I'm just, your thoughts on, you know, it, this all boils down to people, men, women, and children, some of whom you've spoken to. Yeah, and I think what they're saying is that, as you mentioned, the journey here is very difficult. Many going through the Darien jungle, spending time in Mexico and having to deal with uh, violent issues. And when they get to these buoys and they get to this razor wire or concertina wire and they feel like, okay, this is the last step, they keep going. And that is what I heard from the migrants that we have spoken to is that, yes, they saw the buoys and they were like, oh, no, what do I do here? But they kept going because it was too late to turn back and they didn't feel like they, they could. They felt like they needed to continue to move forward. And I think that's what we're continuing to see here is we've seen several groups continue to come by even today and surrender themselves. Jose? Priscilla Thompson and Julie Ainsley, thank you. So